Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, thank the witnesses for being here. You know, I, uh, a little over four years ago when I was chairing the, the Mayo subcommittee, we did an investigation into ISIS and just thought surely that could never happen again. And it seems like this is eerily similar to the outcome that we saw from that debacle, but with a lot bigger numbers. Um, I'd ask Mr. Borkowski and Mr. Stanek, could you tell me why you think we've let it happen again? I, I can't tell you why we think we've we've but with, but with much bigger numbers, right? I, the only thing I can tell you, sir, is that I think I think that we've had to build our own competence in managing a program like this and in learning what you have to put in place. And some of the things that we put in place at the start of this program, in hindsight, were not effective. And so now we're in a position where we can either stop and start over or we can fix as much as, as we think we need to fix to make the risk going forward prudent. And that's exactly what we're doing. Um, and there are risks in that approach. So we're trying to fix what should have probably been fixed before this program, but we're doing it in the process of delivering it. And I can't, I can't explain how we got here. Yeah, and I just don't understand, just from a technical standpoint, why it's so difficult. I mean, they're basically cameras on a pole. And we've got folks monitoring on multiple cameras on, right. in, the, in a dispatcher format. Now, I've been out there and I've seen them and I just don't understand why we're having problems. This is not the most sophisticated technology that, that our country has. Uh, as you just heard the chairwoman, you know, what we're doing in, in Iraq is much more sophisticated. In some ways it is and in some ways it isn't. And one of the key things here, it, well first of all there are two things going on here. And, and I'll, I'll use a little bit of an analogy because what we bet on, and it was probably not a good bet, but what we bet on was that this was like buying a new uh, printer for your computer, and you're supposed to be able to plug it in when you go home, and, you know, the printer's supposed to work. When I do that half the time, the printer doesn't work. It's supposed to, but it doesn't, and I have to go get the CD-ROM and cram it into place, and I'll eventually get it to work. That's, that's one factor. The other is I think we, we miss the point sometimes that this is a networked system, okay? That's very important. This is a network system. All of these towers are connected. And what that means is that you've got, in the case of Tucson 1, nine radars, nine infrared cameras, nine electro-optical cameras, all coming together into one pipeline, one communication pipeline. So there's a process you have to go to manipulate the data from those things to get them all to fit in that pipeline. But, but, and I understand that, but my point is, that is basic technology. We do it here. We have all sorts of information systems here that if we move around just in this one building, just in this one hearing and, and the tele televising of it. This is not rocket science. Oh, and I don't understand why we can't do that networking along that border in a, in a more um, effective way. We can. And if we had, if we had started with the assumption of let's look at the requirement, let's look at what bandwidth we have and so forth and design systems, we probably would have been okay. But we didn't. We started with the assumption that we can plug these things together and it will fit. And once we did that, we were in trouble. Because when it didn't fit, we hadn't started from that normal, natural beginning, and now we had to make it fit. And so we started the wrong way, in my opinion.